You hear these stories about Formula One, you watch the movies and you hear the drivers talking about it, you hear people talking about its massive acceleration. Look, I've got some cars that are pretty brutal, but you're not really prepared for this. Traction control, anti-lock brakes, there's none of that. I mean, this is pure driving. This is a big motor, really stiff suspension. You are literally pointing that car. Kind of doesn't matter what's in the way, it's going there. So you warm those tires up, you get the brakes up, and the grip, it's absolutely insane. And you're going into that corner, and you're braking late, you're downshifting, you're coming back up. The acceleration as you're coming out of that last turn onto the straightaway was just fantastic. And it kind of doesn't matter if you missed a gear, you're making enough power to get yourself way out there. To say you need to be a little bit brave is not being facetious, but you don't think it's going to stop. I'm not a good driver and I know how to keep myself out of trouble. So I'm not a racing guy. I don't want to compete, but I really, really enjoy driving the cars. You could just imagine what a professional driver would do in those cars. I mean, that's one of the main reasons I'm involved in Team Ireland and supporting young drivers. Now we had a young driver, Jordan Dempsey, who 17 years old, just won Young Irish Driver of the Year, got a hold of himself and his dad and they came down and he jumped in the Derek Daly car. Now having said that, 17 years old, he did a really, really good job. He actually was able to push the car and he was whipping that thing around. He was born in 2000, so he was driving a car that's you know, twice his age, but he was very excited to be there and it was, just, it, was, it was a good thing to do, it was fun. John Campion, we're driving a March 811, which is a 1981 Formula One car driven by Derek Daly. And what's pretty cool about this car is it's got three main sponsors. The first one is Guinness. The second one is Moulin Rouge, which is an interesting establishment in Paris. The third one is Rizla, and Americans may not know, but Rizla makes rolling papers. So we got all of the main sins covered there, I think. March was a manufacturer in the late 70s, early 80s. There were a privateer team in the Formula One Championship. What's pretty cool about the car is it's got a three liter Cosworth motor. And those Cosworth motors were customer engines. You could go by the motor and you were competitive up against the rest of the major teams who were manufacturing their own engines. I'm a big Ford guy. Having a Ford engine in it is pretty cool. Cosworth Ford, not quite, but it works really well. One of the main attractions for me being Irish is the fact that it's sponsored by Guinness and was driven by Derek Daly. I remember in 1981 watching Derek race that car on TV. For me, back in the 80s, that was as significant as one of my other Irish motorsports heroes, which was Billy Coleman, and he was a rally guy. So we got a rally guy, we got a Formula One guy, so that sort of pulls it together for me. I was over in Ireland last year and Art McCarrick, who is the development officer for Motorsport Ireland and Team Ireland, sent me this very cryptic text. He says, uh, I saw this, you might want to look at it. And I went, oh God, oh, I need this like I need a hole in the head. He said, John, come on, come on. Derek Daly drove it, sponsored by Guinness and it's a Ford. For God's sake, how can you not? What's really important to me is knowing the provenance of the car. I'd rather not own something if we can't authenticate the car. So we spent a lot of time because those are two cars with the same chassis number. So we hired a couple of experts in the UK, did a lot of research on it and ended up getting to the truth that this was the real car. It was completely redone, the motor was refreshed, all of the suspension parts had been extrayed, so the car was good to go. We did a full inspection mechanically as well as the history of the car. If you started this car cold, you're gonna crater it. So you literally have to heat the car up so you've got this outboard heater, you plug it in, you heat the cooling system up, you go through it, you prime it. It takes about an hour and a half to get this thing going. So there's a lad at the back of it, literally a motor on a plate with a battery, and you stick it in the back of it, and then suddenly this thing fires. <laughs> Thank you.
And what's humorous about the whole thing is I've been on a track one other time in my entire life. You're sort of sitting in the car and this information, you're sort of hearing it, but it's sort of happening there, right? In theory, first gear and away you go, well, I slap into gear and I stall it. Not once, twice. At least there's no crowds. Second time, stall it. Third time, okay, I'm gonna give it some welly and it'll be fine. So I give it some welly and I'm taking off. And this thing is just, you're in the open air, there's windscreens here and it's hitting you. And you go down you. Like, you're, you're thinking, my God, what am I gonna do? You don't wanna stuff the thing in the first corner. And I've been used to the track because I've been around there in the, earlier in the day. This is complete, this is normally aspirated power. Lots of it, massive torque, thing weighs nothing. You're practically sitting on the front wheels. You're there and you're flying down at the first corner. You drop a gear, this thing is like this. Then suddenly you go through your mind, well, I should use more brake probably and less engine brake. Then I hit the back straight and going through the gears. It's just an absolute blur. I mean, visceral. Now, here's the thing of it. I was probably using that car to maybe one-fifth of its capability, probably more like a tenth. And you realize if you're driving it on the limit, things could get really, really bad, really, really fast. So it was a visceral experience, right? And you're just getting used to it and it's just easier and you're bringing on the power ride and then you're not, you find yourself, there's no clutch, you're just going through the gears, you come in sync with it. I don't want to sound like getting at one with the machine, but it kind of feels that way. It was fantastic. I love the romance of the vintage motorsports. Uh, the rallying, the endurance cars, Formula One. I like that whole 70s and 80s. That was when I was growing up and that's when I was watching these cars on television. As we get older, maybe we make a, make a dollar or two, we sort of look back to what you watched and what you experienced. For me, that's growing up in Ireland, watching the TV and seeing an Irishman in Monaco in this cool black ground effects car. It doesn't get better than that, right? The budget back then, it was cheap and cheerful, right? And the budget today is hundreds of millions of dollars. And it seems to me that back in the day, it was pure. I think a lot of the characters have gone, right? The sort of Nicky Loud as James Hunt, Alan Prost, those guys. I mean, that was just a whole different era. I mean, that was, you know, come on. The coolest guy in the world was James Hunt. Watching these guys race was hope. What's rewarding is I really like driving them. I like the mechanics of it, I like the engineering of it, but I think sharing them is important. I think taking them out, driving them, taking them to shows. I'm excited about it, I'm fired up, I'm passionate about it, and I'm sort of trying to transfer that because where's the next generation, right? Who's the guy in 20 years who's gonna say, you know what, I want a March Formula One car? But kind of more importantly, where's the generation of people who can take care of these cars? who can look at the gearbox and say it's this, and who can make the parts, where's that generation? And that's an interesting thought. So kind of my tiny, tiny bit of it is if I can push these cars out, get people interested in them, maybe somebody will go, you know what, I want to do that. Motorsports helped me sort of see a bigger world beyond the parochial, insular little town I'm from, and I want to pass that on. You know what, a black Formula One car with Guinness down the side of it, a big harp on it, and Derek Daly with the Irish flag on it. That is a direct link to where I'm from, and now I'm, fortunate enough to own the car and I'm even more fortunate enough to be able to drive the car and then again to put the young fella in it hopefully in 10 years he's a Formula One driver and we can all sit around saying ah oh, yeah we knew when he drove his first Formula One car and it was a Derek Daly car and that would be really full circle that would be bringing the whole thing together.